Well, folks, I want to tell you something. Now you hear me and hear me well. The old Russian bear may growl. The old Chinese dragon may spew out fire. <laughs> but soon and very soon, we're going to hear the roar of the lion of Judah. Yes, Jesus is coming. Let Russian bear roar. Let the dragon spew out his fire in China. But don't forget, Christian friend, don't forget, there's going to be a loud roar of the Lion of Judah, and that roar is going to sound the sound of come up hither. <laughs> amen and amen. So glad you tuned in. I'm going to be looking at Isaiah, and I'm going to get right into the message, and so if you will, turn there with me, and it's Isaiah, and, and find, if you will, chapter number 51, and then let me also tell you that I'm a little bit apologetic because I've had eye surgery and had my cataracts removed and new uh, uh, lenses placed in my eyes. It's amazing. They take the, the lens of the eye that you were born with and replace them with another. And uh, so that's what I've had happen. So I can see at distance. But to be honest with you, I have to use these now to read with. And so if you'll bear with me, I'll have to look at the, use these glasses to read the scripture and, and uh, take note of some of my notes here as I'm preaching. But I'm so glad you tuned in and I'm gonna give you something from the Word of God and I know that you who are listening to me love the Lord and you love His Word. And I'm so glad for that because I know that the audience that I have is an audience that has been absolutely, totally and completely involved with the Lord and His work and His Word. So let me give it to you. I'm in the book of Isaiah, chapter 51. I'm just going to read one verse. There are numbers that I could, but let me read this one. In 51, verse 1, it says, Hearken to me. That means listen to me. Ye that follow after righteousness, that's you and me. Ye that seek the Lord, that's you and me. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit when she are digged. Did you happen to notice what God was saying there? He said, listen to me. Then he said, I not only want you to listen to me, but I want you to tune in and look unto me. But he said, I don't want you to forget something. I don't want you to forget that you're walking with the Lord, but I also don't want you to forget from the pit from which you were digged. Now here's what the message is all about. And please pay attention because I think it will bless your soul. Isaiah was speaking here to God's people. And he was speaking to God's people just before they're going into captivity. Just before captivity, Isaiah was prophesying them and preaching to them and encouraging them and instructing them as every preacher should. And he was telling them, look, when you enter into suffering and bondage, I want you to remember. I want you to remember the rock from whence you're hewn. In other words, I want you to know about the rock, and the rock, of course, is Jesus, who has hewn you, who has formed you, has framed you, who has made you. Don't forget the rock. Remember the rock. And then he said, I don't want you to forget the pit. Remember the pit from whence ye are digged. In other words, what he's saying here, Isaiah was telling them, remember Egypt where you were. Remember the heavy taskmaster of Pharaoh who kept you in bondage. Remember your slavery. Remember your bondage. What Isaiah was doing here, and is what I want to do for you, 
Isaiah was preaching, don't forget what you used to be. Don't forget what you had been. Don't forget the horrible pit wherein you lived. Don't forget that terrible life that you once was living in. You know, Israel, as you study the Bible, you'll find that they were a very proud nation. So God gave them this amazing passage. Why would God tell them, don't forget what you used to be and don't forget where you came from? Why would he tell them that? Well, my conviction is all of us, all of us that were saved from sin, we came out of our Egypt, the world. We came out of our Pharaoh, which was Satan. We came out of bondage and suffering. So the Lord is saying, don't forget that. Don't forget that pit. We all have a past. We're not proud of the past. And we, won, we would not even want everyone to know the things that we were involved in, in our pit, in our past. For example, compare the church building right now that you're, that you're attending, whatever independent Baptist church that might be, to where you, compare that church building to where you used to spend your weekends. In other words, Compare this to that little leap in, leap out place you used to go to on Saturday nights, and it may have been a bar or a nightclub or dance hall or someplace like that. But compare, and then compare this. Compare the joy and the excitement of the church services that you now uh, attend, and compare that to the filthy, garbage, junk, cesspool, septic tank of the place where you used to be, where they had the vile music and the cursing and the dirty stories and all. Compare the church services and the joy, the gospel hymns, the singing, the, the praise, compared to where you, and when you were in a pit, what you used to do, who you used to be with, where you used to go. In fact, if you want a great comparison, compare this book, the old King James Bible, to what you used to read. Compare this Bible to what you used to look at in the books and the magazines that you had in the pit. Compare your lifestyle to what you used to do. What and, and, and who you used to be with and what you used to be. And then what you ought to do is just take a moment when you make that comparison and jump up and down and clap your hands and say, Hallelujah, glory to God, praise His name. I've been hewn out of the rock. I have c come up out of the pit. And God wants us to remember. He wants us to remember the rock that has hewn us out. He wants us to remember the pit from which he brought us out. Now here's the thing I want you to understand. God wants us to, to do these things and there's a reason why he wants us to do that. Here's my first point. My first point is God wants us to remember so as to keep us humble. Oh yeah, God wants us to remember where we came from to keep us humble, to keep us from being proud and keep us from taking credit and to have us to have a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving from what we've been brought out of. Nearly every time, listen, nearly every time I preach, what I'll do is afterwards, I always try to remember the first time I ever preached. And I'll never forget that. That little 10 minute blunder on watch night service at the South Sheridan Baptist Church in Denver, Colorado, where the pastor, by the way, who was Dr. Ed Nelson, who just passed away this week, and was my mentor, and my heart is grieved over that, by the way. But I, after I got done preaching that message at that watch night service for him, and he afterwards tried to encourage me and tried to tell me that it was a good message, and here I was, just a young preacher boy, going to Bible college, didn't know the scripture, and made so many grammatical errors, and failed what I believe failed, but he still tried to encourage me. And 
what I'm trying to say is God doesn't want me to forget that. God doesn't want me to forget. So I try to remember how horrible my first sermon was. Why? So it would humble me. I'm not saying my sermons are much better now, but I know how bad those were, that one was. And so I'm just simply saying God wants us to remember. He wants us to remember so as to keep us humble. Where were you? What were you doing in your unsaved days compared to what, where you go now, who your friends are, and, and what activities you have? I mean, God wants us to remember the pit, the pit from which he brought us out, and the rock, which is the Lord Jesus that hewn us. You know, there's some others in the Bible that I think we need to just be reminded of that I believe ought to also remember. Mary Magdalene, let me talk to these people for a moment. Mary Magdalene, as you announced the resurrection of the Lord, which you had the privilege to do, and as you tell the world that Jesus lives and that the tomb is empty, which you did, Mary Magdalene, don't forget, you were once possessed of seven devils. Don't forget, Mary Magdalene, you were once a wicked, vile, fallen woman. You were brought up out of the pit, and now you get to announce the resurrection of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That ought to humble her, as it does me, to remember the pit from which we were brought out and to be able to have the privilege now that we're out of the pit, to announce the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hey, Peter, as you preached that great sermon on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 people, and as you write two books of God's eternal word, hey, Peter, as you become a great pillar of the church, one of the great apostles, remember, Peter, you were just at one time a poor, cussing fisherman without anything, but he brought you out of the pit and he's hewn you from the rock. Oh, Peter, let that humble you so that there's no pride dwelling in you, that, that, that you don't forget what God has done for you. Let me talk to the woman of Sychar at the well. Hey, woman at Sychar, standing at the well, as you become a great soul winner and say to all the people, come and see a man that told me all things that I ever did, don't forget that, dear lady. You were once a fallen woman. You were living with wicked men and in vile, dirty, filthy sin, giving your body to all kinds of lewdness, and you were brought up out of that pit. Don't forget that, dear lady of Sychar. God allows you to tell others about the man who told you all things that you ever did. That's what Isaiah is saying. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. We need to remember Hey, Gideon, as you lead three, now get this, 300 men into one of the greatest victories ever recorded, don't forget where God found you, Gideon. Here you were a timid introvert. The Bible says that you were the least child of the least family of the least tribe of the least nation of the world. Hey, Gideon, don't forget the pit from whence ye are digged. That God would use you to perform such a great victory in a great battle. Are you listening to me today? Sometimes you and I need to take note because we forget the pit from which he brought us out of. And we're not as thankful as we ought to be. And we don't praise as much as we ought to praise. And we do not serve as much as we ought to serve. 
Hey, listen to this one. Hey, David, as you sit on the throne, and here you are arrayed in all your kingly garments, you who failed that great giant, Goliath, you who killed the bear and the lion with your own hands, you who are the mightiest king ever, hey, David, don't forget, your dad didn't even think you would be qualified. He didn't even give you on the list as one of his sons. Don't forget, David, the great lineage of our Messiah, and your own dad did not even have the in initiative to present to Samuel that you would be the one son that might be considered to be the king? Hey, David, doesn't that humble you? Doesn't that humble you? Hey, Moses, you who led the Israelites across the Red Sea on dry ground. Hey, Moses, you who smote the rock, prayed, and here came down manna. You who were known as the greatest leader of all times. Moses, don't forget when you were a little baby floating down the Nile River to go into destruction. And don't forget, Moses, you killed a man. Don't forget this. I'm just simply saying, sometimes Isaiah is trying to tell us you need to remember the rock from which you were hewn and the pit from which you came. And every one of us have those memories. And every one of us ought to jump up and down and shout glory to God, praise the Lord. Look what he brought me from. And look now, I, have, I even have the holy of holy spirits living in my heart. Hey, Brother Miller, I'm talking to me. You who have sat in a room with some of the greatest preachers in America. You who got to travel with Dr. Hiles and preach with him 12 years. Know both of the Bob Grays who built great works for God. Got to preach for and preach with Dr. Lee Robertson. Hey, Brother Miller, you got to sit on the platform with Dr. John R. Rice. Hey, Brother Miller, you got to have Brother Lester Roloff eat in your home with your family and you ate in his home and preached for him and he preached for you. Hey, Brother Miller, B.R. Lakin, you got to chauffeur him around in the car, that great evangelist. Hey, Brother Miller, you got to preach for Tom Malone and have Tom Malone preach for you. Hey, Brother Miller, what about all of those that God has allowed you to have fellowship with and communion with and so forth. And by the way, what I used to only dream about, now I have had happen. I used to sit in a Bible college and know about these men, but I've got to rub shoulders with them. I've got to pray with them. I've got to have them pray with me and lay hands on me. Oh, don't forget, Dean Miller, you were once a drunk. Way out there in Deer Lodge, Montana, literally laying in a gutter. And look what God's done. Hey, Jacob, a prince of God, and as you meet Esau, you were a dirty, tricking schemer. You stole a birthright. Hey, Jacob, you better not forget the pit from which you were digged. And I want to say something else, too. Hey, Paul. As God leads you to be the greatest preacher and a missionary and church builder and one of the most of the books of the Bible you wrote, don't you forget, Paul, you killed Christians. Don't forget, Paul, you persecuted the church of God. Don't forget, Paul, the hole from which you were digged. Don't you forget it. And best God, I don't believe he did and I don't believe he does. I believe he was a humble man and has now accepted the fact that God brought him from a pit, a dirty, rotten pit. Hey, friend, listen to me. Matthew, I'm talking about Matthew that wrote one of the books of the Bible. As you take your pen and write the first book of this New Testament, Matthew, don't forget as a tax collector, you literally robbed and stole from the people. Hey, Matthew, 
Don't forget the pit from which you were digged. Jump up and down and shout and say, Glory to God, look what the rock has done. He's hewn me and he's brought me out of the pit. Hey, prodigal son, remember this one? Hey, prodigal son, with your new ring on your finger and a new robe on your body and the fatted calf cooked and on the table and the father's love with his arm around you and you're celebrating a party? Hey, prodigal son, you better not forget. Remember those foul friends you had when you left the father's house? Remember where you forsook and you went into the hog pen? Remember when you were down eating with the hogs? Don't forget, God's brought you out of the pit. Be thankful. Thank God. You were robbed and stripped on the Jericho Road. And as you, as you check into the inn and given oil in your wounds and bound up by the Good Samaritan and given a ride and given money and a care to keep and watch over you, don't forget the condition that you once were. The Good Samaritan, Jesus Christ, God the Savior, came along and brought you up out of that ditch, out of that pit. Oh, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, God doesn't want us to forget the pit from which we were digged. And number one, it should humble us. And as I stand here before you right now, my heart is humbled as I think back 57 years ago, the kind of a lifestyle that I was living and the kind of a things that I was doing. God wants us to remember. Remember what he's brought you from. That's what, that's what he's saying here. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Look unto the rock when ye were hewn, into the hole of the pit when ye are digged. Oh my goodness. Why? Because God wants that to humble us. That we're not everything that we think we are. And God wants us to know that he's everything that we ought to think that he is. God wants us to remember. Number two, God wants us to remember so that we will truly give him a heart of praise. How can we sit here today, heaven for our home? <laughs> Every sin that we've ever committed or will commit, forgiven. Jesus in our heart and all of the blessings of being a Christian, how can we not but praise him? Lift our voice in the morning as we get up and lift our voice and praise at night when we go to bed. Listen, I can praise God for so many things. I can just like right now, I can, and, and I do, I'll turn on the water on the faucet and I'll remember the old well. I'll remember the dipper that we drank from out of the bucket. I remember the slobber all over the dipper of other family members and just drink it up. Funny, there are not many viruses in those days either, but anyway, I can remember that the, I once, I can turn on the water now, but now I can have the old well in my memory is what I used to get water from. I cannot use the, uh, the restroom, the, the bathroom that we have in our house without remembering the old outhouse that I used to have to go to. I mean, you've heard of two rooms and a bath? Well, we had two rooms and a path, a path out the back door. And oh, how cold there in Montana. We had three seats in that old outhouse. One seat was fairly large and it was a smaller one, medium sized, and there was a, a, a little one. I don't know why they did it that way, but they did it. And so, needless to say, those three seats probably represented Mama Bear, <laughs> Papa Bear, and Baby Bear. But I can remember that old outhouse. And I can jump up and down and praise God for a nice warm bathroom in a house where I can go. I can hardly open a refrigerator without remembering the old ice box. We used to have to put up ice. 
and have an ice box where the ice would melt and you had to have something to catch that but it would keep the food as cold until we put new ice. I can I mean I now I got a refrigerator. I need to jump up and down, praise God. I not only have a refrigerator, I have got a re I've got a bathroom and I've got a water faucet. I can remember that in in, in those times uh, I, I can go in the house here and, and adjust the thermostat in the house and be able to get uh, some heat to come on. But I remember when I had the old wood stove and I had to chop wood and stuff rags in the cracks of the house to keep the cold air out and at night pushing feed sacks around the doors. I just remember, listen, all I'm trying to say is, I need to jump up and down and praise God. I can remember the first car that I ever had, an old 36 Chevy, and it had that, what they call knee action, and the, and the, and the wheels would cave in at times, and, and sometimes I'd have to get out and turn the car instead of using the steering wheel, turn the, uh, the tires itself to go around the curve. Listen, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I can remember, and I'm going to remember, and I'm going to remember so I can thank God. I remember sometimes, I, 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 like right now, I turn on a light, and I can remember what I used to do is have to light the old kerosene lamps that we used for light in the, in the ranch house. And I remember the wheat and had mouse droppings on it, but mom would have me go out and get some wheat and she'd bring it in and she'd put it in water and the mouse droppings would float to the top and she'd let it soak over the night so she could cook it for breakfast. I remember those times. I'm simply saying, remember the pit from which you were digged. Remember, the Lord was saying to Israel, as I led you to victory after victory, don't forget those Egyptian uh, factories that you once worked at. Don't forget those bondages that Pharaoh had you in. Don't forget all the uh, onions and the leeks and the melons and the garlics and, and your misery. Don't forget deliver, that the deliverance of the Red Sea. I'm simply saying that God wants us to remember, remember from whence we were digged. Oh, I must not forget old who Dean Miller was when he came from the pit. God is saying, if you remember it well, it'll make you humble. But it'll not only make you humble, but if you remember, it'll cause you to praise. And I do praise. God wants us to remember. First of all, God wants us to remember so that we'll be humble. God wants us to remember so that we'll praise. And then thirdly, God wants us to remember so we can be warned, warned. Look at the hole of the pit so that you won't hang around it anymore. That's what God's saying. Look back where you once were and don't hang around where you once were anymore. Don't hang around with those old uh, sinful things anymore. Don't go near that pit again. Don't go near that bar and that tavern, that dance floor, those old friends. No, sir. Don't go near it. God says, it, God says I want you to remember so you'll be warned. The old way of the, the way you used to dress. You ladies see what unsaved women wear today. You don't want to go back to that. Let that pit be a warning to you that God's brought you out of a life of wickedness and vileness and has set you in a place where you can be decent and ladylike and feminine. God has brought you out of the pit of the worldliness of, of seduction and sens sensuality and, and those kind of things. God said, I brought you out of that. Don't hang around that old pit. Look back at it, but don't go near it. If you go near it, you may fall back into it. Remember its misery. Remember its heartaches. Remember its emptiness. Remember its loneliness. Remember its stench. Remember that pit. God wants us to remember it, to be warned, and to remember to be humble and praised and to be warned. And then listen to this, and I'm through. God wants us to remember that old pit and the rock that we were hewn so that we will be encouraged, so that we'll be encouraged. Now God knew Israel was going to be in bondage and captivity when he wrote this. He wanted them to remember how he had led them out of Egypt, through the Red Sea, rained down manna. He wanted them to remember the promised land. Why? So that they would be encouraged that he could do it again. He could lead them again. I remember my past and my horrible circumstances and I get encouraged because if God could bring me through all that, He can bring me through anything and everything I face today. 
And in this day and age, in this society, in this world's turmoil, I need to be encouraged that God can still do it. Am I talking to someone now who's still in the pit? Maybe you're still there this morning. Maybe, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking to somebody and you've forgotten how to praise God for what he's brought you from. You forgot to be humble and you've developed some pride of your own achievements that you think are your own, but God has brought you to a place of successes and you forgot to give him the glory for that success. I'm simply saying, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget. Don't forget the rock from which you were hewn. And don't forget the pit from which he brought you out of. Why? So that, number one, you can be humble. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's exactly what I'm thinking right now that we need. We can be humble. And number two, we can praise. And God knows we need to lift our voices in praise. And number three, we can be, by this passage of Scripture, don't forget because this is a warning. Don't look back into the pit and desire to get, don't get close to it. Just from a distance, look back as to where you once were. Don't be drawn back into it. And then look at that rock in that pit so that you can be encouraged that what God has done for you, He can keep on doing for you and you can still get some great headway in this life. God bless you folks. Thank you and thank you for listening. Tune in again, please. I love you and thank God for you.